Hichem. Oh, my name is Luis Miranda. Uh, my pronouns are he, him. I am born in Tongva land in California, and I find myself in unceded Eastern Shoshone and Goshen land, also known as Salt Lake City. So to introduce myself, I want to read to you uh, an I am poem that I've written before. Uh, for those of you that were BIPOC and were here in the first session, it's a, it's a version of this, so. I am being the child of a Guatemalan housekeeper and Mexican baker. I am the loss of a parent and the long incarceration of the other too early to remember in my infancy. I'm an upbringing in Guatemalan Caribbean in Garifalan land. I am boleros, salsa, merengue, reggae, and dancehall booming in the distance all day, every day. I am bike rides through muddy streets of a breezy port town, collecting salt in my skin and sweat in my upper lips. I am coconut and banana palm trees and stinky fish in local market. I am news of war, witness of violence, caring of trauma. I am migration. I am singing hip hop when I didn't know the lyrics or English for that matter. I am forming an emotional bond with a freeway sign that warns drivers about immigrant families crossing the highway by foot. I'm phone calls with bill collectors in Spanish and English. I am the fear of arriving home not knowing if this is a day I will learn my parent has been deported. I am the making of too many lifelong friendships with strangers. I am urging calls at midnight by people facing deportation and showing up at their homes in wee hours of the night. I am furiously typing back and forth on WhatsApp when my comrades are being brutally beaten in Plaza Bolivar in Bogota. I am standing up in front of my pens and receiving booze from the crowd. I am lonely afternoons in the Utah's Eastern deserts, anxious for my safety while organizing in the front lines of the coal industry. I am backyard bonfires with guitars, potlucks, and heartfelt conversations. I am healing. I am pain. I'm an East Point Peace Academy core team member and facilitator today. And I'm here today walking the short journey of the trail of life with you in this session. And we are beloved community. And we are the arch of the universe bending towards justice. And I wouldn't have it any other way. Thank you. All right, well, um, thank you for that. And today's workshop is going to be about shadow work. So uh, let me start by being clear what this workshop is not about, um, because I feel like sometimes this can get a bit confused. This workshop is not about how to forgive and forget others. We usually don't talk about forgiveness and forgetting in restorative justice spaces. We, we talk about healing and accountability. This workshop is not gonna be about how to excuse or enable abusive and harmful behavior. This workshop is not going to be about how to pacify our anger, fury, disappointment, or resentment. You know, whatever valid emotions that emerge from challenging situations that we clearly need to energize our conflicts and transform our relationships. Today's workshop, is about learning to exercise our mindfulness muscles. It is about preparing ourselves so that in those moments when we inevitably experience triggers, instead of just like reacting and feeling like we've lost control, that we know that we can access a space for choice. So we can choose how to show up at that moment. And so that we can meet those critical moments in our struggle for personal and collective liberation with both strategy and soulfulness. In a deeper sense, this workshop today is about creating the space we need to allow emotions like compassion and empathy and grief to coexist with whatever all of the valid emotions we might experience. And in a deeper sense, it is a practice that can allow us to sit in discomfort with others through learning to sit with our own shame about ourselves. So what am I talking about? Um, the most basic way I can explain shadow work comes from one of my mentors, Diane Hamilton. Uh, she's a, a mediation uh, trainer and a mediator and also a Zen monk uh, over at Two Arrows Zen here in Salt Lake City. And usually 
she explains uh, this uh, shadow work through sharing the story about her being with an adult friend and his toddler. At a moment when, you know, Diane's friend was distracted, so they're together, it's a, her friend and a toddler. Uh, his friend gets distracted and his little daughter dropped a glass of water, like spilling it all over the floor. Oops, the little girl that was clearly embarrassed looks up to her dad and then she points to Diane and says, she did it. Isn't that curious? The little girl felt such shame at that moment for having dropped a cup of water and particularly the disappointment or anger that it might have caused her dad that she couldn't hold what just happened in the first person. It was too emotionally overwhelming. So for her, it was easier and a coping mechanism to redirect the blame to someone else. For her, that shame about what she did was her shadow at that moment. So let me offer you two ways to think about shadows and shadow work. One is where the term actually comes from, from Carl Jung, Jungian psychology. Um, for him, shadow was anything that is out of the light of awareness. Um, shadow uh, and shadow work is about coming into contact with the unconscious, which is what he was trying to open himself into. How the unconscious material and his psyche affected the conscious space in his life and him finding that there's no end to the generativity of the mind, right? The, so the unconscious and the taboo things that we don't know or we don't notice are always there and are always interacting with who we are at any given moment in the present. So again, shadow as something that we are aware of as opposed to not. There's another uh, approach, which is by Ken Wilber, uh, who is an integral theorist. Um, because integral theory tends to focus on wholeness and being able to encompass the whole gamut of emotions as a way to evolve and, and, and grow. Um, um, the idea is that everything exists within us and it would see shadow as the thing that the ego thinks is not me. And so, but even if the ego thinks it's something that's not me, like a particular quality or, or, or characteristic, it is still in some ways a part of me. Uh, an example of this might be the Door of Prejudice at the Los Angeles Museum of Tolerance, uh, where to enter the museum, you're given two choices. A door in red that reads prejudice at the top, and another one in green, in, in, sorry, in green that reads unprejudiced. The surprise for anyone trying to enter through the unprejudiced door, you know, I'm, I'm not prejudiced, it's all good, um, is that it's, it's locked. It doesn't exist. You can only enter through the prejudice door. This is an example of how art can create space for us to meet our shadows. So from this, I want to offer a technology that Ken Wilbur developed that he calls 321 to help us meet our shadows. Um, 321 uh, refers to uh, helping ourselves move the shadow from the third person perspective like the little girl did, like she did it, so he, she, they, to the second person perspective to talk to it to the first person perspective. So in the third person perspective, we face it, we talk, uh, 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 sorry, we, we, we face it, we talk about it as it appears in someone else, trying to identify the triggering quality in someone else that triggers us. In a second person perspective, we talk to it in the second person, you. We talk to it with a curiosity that asks questions to the triggering quality to understand its existence. And in a first person perspective, we will be it. In other words, to try to find ourselves in the presence of that triggering quality. And so that's what we're gonna work on uh, around today, that three to one uh, process to help us uh, identify things that may trigger us outside of us that we see very clearly in other people, but that sometimes we might struggle to see in ourselves. Now, I wanna make a, just a little note, a little parenthesis that a lot of this sounds negative, but also there's something we call golden shadows. Golden shadows, you know how you have somebody like you really idolize and you're like, I really like that person. They're the greatest. They're so kind, they're compassionate, this and that. Oh my goodness, I just, I get so nervous. Um, sometimes those qualities also exist in us but we hold some shame or difficulty actually being able to be with it, right? 
Uh, and so it's possible for us to have a golden shadow for somebody who we really admire for very positive qualities. The key is to be able to recognize that there's a trigger uh, there. And so, but for today, we're gonna work around, uh, we're gonna focus around a negative or triggering quality to work with. So uh, we're moving on now to the next portion, which is I'm gonna give you some instructions. We're gonna do some modeling for the exercise. Then you have some time to work uh, um, you know, in your pairs. So this, this is a structured experience to help you identify and meet one of your shadows around someone who triggers you. And think about it, um, my invitation there as you think about already like, oh, who could I think about? Or just think about something that has made you upset recently, but also be mindful that if it's something that it's too triggering or too upsetting that it might dysregulate you, that it's okay to not work with it right now and possibly choose other material. So this will be a paired activity. There will be a speaker and a facilitator. So it's gonna be two different roles, but are gonna be really, really important um, to be able to practice this. And you'll have 20 minutes. You're gonna split half of it with each other. So during the 10 minutes of individual shares, as a facilitator, you're going to support your partner to go through these rounds. Um, and we're gonna go through it together. And I'm going to model it with my friend, uh, Madison Sudwicks. So, uh, so Madison, hi. Hi. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Welcome. Uh, so um, we are going to work on this together here. Um, Madison, uh, I know Madison because we've, we've worked together before, but we're also friends, neighbors, um, and we've also been part of the same Sangha with the same uh, mentor. So thank you, Maddie, for agreeing to be able to share about your experience today. Yeah. Okay. All right, so uh, for the first round, uh, and actually this might be a good moment. Um, uh, Sarah, if you could uh, drop in the chat the, the handout, that would be wonderful as we go through this. So there you go, you got the handout. So for the first round, uh, we are going to face it, that there's something, something else going on. So for this, I'm gonna be the facilitator uh, Maddie is going to be the speaker, and I'm going to ask Maddie, just as you as a facilitator, you're going to ask the speaker, describe in detail a negative quality of a person you are disturbed by. So, as the speaker, you'll take the opportunity to describe this opportunity as fully as possible. Uh, so, don't minimize anything. Think about it as an opportunity to vent, you know, bitch about it, get it out, right? Like, just really feel it, right? This, this thing that disturbs you somewhere else. Um, and so as a facilitator, what I'm gonna be listening for is one, listening with empathy, but two, also trying to reflect a triggering quality that they might have uh, uh, identified. And I'll reflect that and confirm it with the speaker. All right, so let's give it a try. So uh, Maddie, uh, describing detail, uh, a, a negative quality in a person you're disturbed by? Yeah, so um, one that's coming up for me currently is someone, uh, happens with someone I work with. Um, a couple times recently, we've had like a lot of different meetings where they'll ask for feedback and then subsequently like not take anyone's feedback and go do exactly what they were planning to do from the very beginning. Um, and that just like really can be triggering to me because it feels like they don't value insight from anyone. And it's a kind of a perfunctory ask for feedback. Mm. Mm. Thank you for sharing Maddie. Mm -hmm. So I'm hearing that um, in this person, is it is the quality stubbornness? Mm. Is that it, or is it is it arrogance? Like I'm curious. What would yeah. you say is a, the triggering quality here from this person's behavior? Yeah, I think I resonate more with with arrogance, um, and I think there's also something like feels kind of falsely. <laughs> um, maybe duplicitive or something of like, you know, wanting to act like they care about 
your opinion and then being going with their own anyways. Okay. Duplicitous. Does that does that connect better? Yeah, I think so. Super. Thank you. All right. Mm -hmm. So um, thank you for sharing that, Maddie. That's the first round. And uh, now we're going to move to the second round. Now that we have identified the quality, as a facilitator, I'm going to be informed by this description that Maddie put forward, and particularly the quality, that duplicitous quality. Now, my job is going to try to embody that quality. So it's it's role playing essentially, and I'm 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 going to be playing uh, almost a caricature of it. Uh, but for that, I have to tap in myself. And so, what's going to happen is that now I'm going to Maddie's going to start by asking me, "Who are you?" I'm going to describe myself like I am this quality. And then as a speaker, your job is going to be to now talk to it in the, in the second person, like with curiosity, like, you know, why do you exist? What is your function? Why are you this way? Why do you need to tell me? What gifts do you have for me? So just be curious and also notice uh, the triggers that come with it. I'll say uh, this is going to be, this is usually like a little bit of a more challenging part. For you as a facilitator, you, this is going to be using your imagination and, and do your best, right? Um, but the one thing you want to do is metabolize this in behalf of the speaker. In other words, if I'm talking about, uh, let's say, arrogance, I don't want to also be like, excuse me, I actually want to act like it. So uh, notice as a speaker how you feel. So uh, let's go ahead and, and, and do this. Uh, you can start uh, yeah. this round with Maddie. Yeah. Um, who are you? I am um, duplicitiveness. Hmm. What does that mean? You know, it, it means it means uh, important things. It, it means um, you know, it means that I'm here. It means that I'm trying, and um, yeah, I'm. You know, I am, it, it means this. Why are you this way? What do you mean? Mm. I am what who I am. I always show the same way everywhere. Mm -hmm. I would never be untrue to anybody. Mm. Are you? Because I'm not. What gifts do you have for me? Hmm. I am the, the greatest gift I have is that I'm always going to show up with my true self here with you and I will never lie mm. um, and who I am is is who I am uh, and so take it or leave it but I am who I am here and I'm here to be here We'll stop there for a moment. <laughs> uh, it's a it's a bit of more complex quality than say like you know uh, something else, but but you know this is me trying my best. It also notice how as a facilitator I try to accentuate some of those qualities, uh, and as a speaker sense like the trigger, face it a little bit. Where is it in your body? Be curious. Okay, so then after that we're gonna move into round three, uh, and for the round three you're gonna be it. So now the facilitator, so I'm gonna go back out of the role play and now I'm just gonna ask Maddie as a speaker, tell me about how this quality shows up in you. Now as a speaker, your role and your job here is gonna be um, trying to now uh, exist and uh, try to find that quality in yourself. And it's going to be probably a little bit hard and uh, it might be a bit challenging, but do your best. Uh, and if you get a little bit stuck, uh, silence is okay. But also as a facilitator, you're also okay with like just asking the prompt again and just gently supporting uh, the speaker. Again, no judgment if you're getting a little bit stuck, that's totally fine. But notice, notice how you find that in yourself. So, all right. Uh, and so, um, Maddie. 
Uh, tell me about how this quality shows up in you, the quality of duplicity. Mm. Yes. Yeah, I think it, it really came to light to me <laughs> when I asked you um, why you, as duplicitiveness, why you're that way. And, and your answer was, I am who I am. Uh, and that just like hit me of like, so am I, right? Like everyone has these multifaceted parts of themselves. And I often um, just by like nature of being human may say or do things that are different than the image I have of myself, right? That are not mm -hmm. in, in line with my values. Um, and so that, that really hit true to me. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Maddie. Thank you for, for doing this with us. So uh, with that, um, thank you for sharing about that. And hopefully this gives you, we did this in a very abridged version. You're gonna have 10 minutes per person. Uh, we're gonna put actually about 21 minutes in the timer. So, but try to share it around. We'll send you some, some prompts uh, there to help you uh, know like when you're halfway through your share and when probably you should switch. Uh, and so uh, any clarifying questions before we, we move forward? And before actually that, just question, Sarah, um, uh, are, we, are we ready for the breakouts? Just like yeah, you I need, need one, any? I need one more minute to, to do a last update. Perfect, okay, so yeah, last update there. Uh, and so I'll, I'll take your question, Lou. Yeah, so, um... Was your job when you were the when you were role playing? Was your job to role play duplicitousness, or to role play the person that she was talking about? Yes, uh, my 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 job was to try to uh, uh, role play duplicitousness. Or okay, so the quality. Yeah, the you're role playing the so quality. the quality. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that question, Lou. Um, and uh, okay, and Nan, do you have a question? Just I, I do. I was kind of um, going along with Maddie uh, on the parallel track of what I would say. And then when I had to think about it in myself, then a whole bunch of this, this kind of waterfall of self-doubt came mm. flooding into me. And it's left me feeling really uh, unfinished. So uh, I just want to let you know that. Mm. Thank you, Nan. Um, thank you for expressing that. And, and uh, I hope that you get a chance to maybe explore that a little bit through that exercise with, with your pair uh, as a way to process a bit more. But also this is the hard work we're doing, right? As nonviolent, uh, uh, you know, organizers that are trying to figure out how to how to show up uh, in this complexity so so thank you so much Nan. and um all right with that sarah are we ready to go okay so you have about 20 minutes we'll see you at the other side and we'll be brief all right have fun welcome back everybody i think uh that might be about everybody that participated great so as you're coming back um I know that this usually can wake up uh, a few emotions because we're dealing with triggers. So I just want to invite you for a moment. Uh, if you want to do this with me, uh, you're welcome to. Just to take a moment and just take a deep breath. And if you can, just, just notice anything uh, in your body. So, don't worry too much about the stories. Just give, can you do a little bit of a scan of where you might be feeling anything at this moment? Is, it, is there anything in your head? Nose? Your neck? How about your chest and your breathing? shoulders, belly, legs, knees, your 
feet. And to yourself, um, if there's anything that came up, just, just honoring it. Our bodies are wonderful, wonderful, powerful instruments that um, experience things in an attempt to protect us, to love us deeply and profoundly. And so we just want to thank our bodies for for giving us all that feedback. Um, so thank you. All right. Take a deep breath and then come back to the room and go from there. Just give you a moment. All right. Thank you. All right. Well, with everybody back, um, I want to hear how it went. And I'm, I'm, I'm curious, like, uh, are there any folks for whom uh, this worked? Uh, and feel free to raise your hand uh, if you'd like to share your experience. Um, I'm, I'm also like particularly curious, is there anybody who had like a, a moment like, oh, my energy just shifted. Oh yeah, I, mm. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe there's something here. I don't know, I'm curious. Um, I'll go ahead and go. Um, I would say that um, it only took maybe two or three of the questions to the facilitator before like my light bulb went off and I'm like, oh, I'm talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> and um, my partner was like, was able to observe that as soon as that happened, I was ready to move on to the next step. Like, oh, let's just move on. Um, and I didn't even realize that I shifted that quickly to like, I mean, I faced it, but I kind of was like, oh, mm -mm. let's move mm -hmm. on to the next step <laughs> where we talked about it more. But um, yeah, mm -hmm. that was interesting. Mm -hmm. That's powerful. Thank you. Um, thank you. Um, and. And I usually have that that moment too. Sometimes, like I've been in conflict with other people. Um, like I know one of my shadows is around being organized. I have ADHD and I'm super disorganized. But if somebody is disorganized with something, I get frustrated, and then I'm like, "Oh, you should be doing this and that." You know, like uh, you know, I start like with this sort of like demanding language, and then I realize like, "Oh no, I'm talking about me." Oh shoot. I am, <laughs> I am the one that feels really overwhelmed right now. I need some space. Um, I'm curious who else had a, a similar experience. If you'd like to share. Uh, Priscilla. Um, can I also ask a question or should I share first and then? Oh, please, please go for it. Mm -hmm. So I was just wondering um, with this exercise, if um, like the point was to like have compassion for the the characteristics that we see in ourselves too or if it's like supposed to be one of those exercises where it's like oh it always comes back to me and like what's happening in my body mm. that's a great question uh priscilla um so i understand that to be uh was this about uh how to exercise compassion with other people or is it about something about myself right like uh, self-management, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes. Uh, this is a. Uh, this was about uh, about yourself, about myself, right? Because um, the idea is that um, when I'm able to identify um, the things that I I may feel ashamed about or that are really difficult for me to to be with, when I work with other people, it might just get really challenging. Right, and so there's a very there's something that feels like a release when I allow myself, uh, I afford myself the ability to be imperfect, uh, and also to to allow some of these qualities to be there. And the byproduct of that can be that because of that, in response to other people that 
could be producing harm, it might give us enough of a capacity to be able to choose compassion as well because we can see it in ourselves. Um, and, and I'll tell you like, for me, why this is one of the most important practices for myself is because um, when I was, just to share something personal, when I was younger, um, I, I, I lost my sister in Guatemala and her husband on uh, something very terrible that I want to spare details um, for, you know, for triggering purposes, but um, their lives were taken away by other people. And I had a lot of resentment and anger um, at the people that, that did this and not really understanding what happened. Uh, but also like there was a point in the healing process where I had to also understand the context and the historical situation that is leading people to make some really terrible decisions, right? And the fact is that I could have been born in a different place. I could have been born with different traumas and with different upbringing. And that could have very well ended up a very similar way. This is not to uh, play a pity and charity or saviorism game, right? It's just to, to be like, wow, we're both humans and we're sharing this. And how can we be in solidarity with each other? Now, as I'm saying this, again, this is something that is a very serious harm. Uh, and so for me, I never actually met the people that did what they did. But for me, I could see how the context of the civil war in Guatemala could have also brought me into being a paramilitary or being a guerrilla member if I was just born in a different place in time. And so that's what helps me in that to be able to have this sort of muscle. But this isn't about just, again, excusing some of that, right? It's, 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 it, does that make sense? Did that help answer the question a bit? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thank you, Priscilla, for that question. Uh, I'm curious, uh, how about people that might have struggled with it? Because um, it can be a bit challenging. I'm curious if there's anybody in the room who would like to share their experience. Uh, I see, Leslie, you were raising your hand. Do you like yep. to share? Uh, I thought it was very difficult. Um, I found it difficult to facilitate my partner because I completely understood what it was that triggered her. <laughs> and listening to her, I felt equally triggered and it made it hard to be a facilitator. Mm. Mm. And also <laughs> when she was facilitating me, she did such a good job that my trigger got more triggered. <laughs> oh my goodness. When she was uh, embodying the quality, I can really feel it. And I felt it in my solar plexus. So I think it might be a power issue. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Um, and um, yeah, I'm curious, what was, what was the quality you were, you were uh, working with or struggling with, if, if you feel comfortable with sharing, just the quality. Uh, her quality, the one I was trying to embody for her. Mm -hmm. um, a massive ego that took all the space in the room and, you know, was not listening to anyone else. Mm. I find that really annoying. Mm. I... I find that very annoying too. And I can see Shakira and other folks sharing. I'm also, I've noted uh, Salal, your point, and I'll just get back to it in a second. Um, yeah, I, I can feel that too. And I also feel like um, I can sometimes uh, show up with such an ego that I really think I'm, I'm, I'm the, the slice of pizza and everything. And it's like, oh, I really need to humble myself a little bit. So um, yeah, thank you, Leslie. Um, yeah, um, Priscilla, uh, this is just a, a good check. I, I know that you had a question, but did you also have a share you wanted to, to share as well? Something you wanted to share? Um, yeah. I can, yeah. Uh, well, huh? I actually both struggled and had on the way to my light bulb <laughs> or struggled on the way to my light bulb where, um, in 
my second round with uh, my facilitator, um, I was feeling so dysregulated. I noticed that I had stopped listening to the characteristic um, mm -hmm. and I had filled in their responses with my narrative of what the other person was going to say because I was thinking of a specific person. Um, but I ended up being able to have a, a dialogue with the narrative that I filled in mm -hmm. <laughs> um, where uh, the quality was obliviousness um mm. and um kind of stemming from like privilege and um what i was feeling was this feeling of like stop taking from me and i think um something that i'm afraid of um is taking too much uh so i guess maybe that's my golden mm. shadow mm. Mm. Yeah, I, I can sense the, the, the challenge of like being triggered and, and, and suddenly like starting to, it sounds like there was a moment of like starting to add your narrative to it because you have your own experiences on it. And so uh, are you still connected with, with the other person? Oh, um, kind of like the noticing, right? Yeah, well, I just, yeah, I just noticed like, you know, they were talking and I just mm -hmm. didn't yeah. hear anything. Priscilla, that's beautiful because I think that's so human. How many times have I been in a conversation with somebody and I get like, oh, I'm trying to listen empathetically, but also like this also gets triggered in me and all of a sudden I stop listening. And so that, that capacity to, to be aware of it and then making shifts, that's, that's really good. Um, thank you for sharing, Priscilla. And um, I, I think I need to bring this conversation to a wrap. Um, so before I do that, um, I, I, I want to go back to the question that Priscilla had put forward. Um, and indeed, um, just tell you with this, to offer it to you uh, as a way for you to have some form of personal practice of just awareness of, of triggers and then the stories that we create around those triggers uh, and checking like uh, where where am I in this? Is there something here that just needs to be seen and tended for and cared for? And how would we show up differently, more maybe with an open heart, maybe more courageously around situations that are difficult? This is not something that you just, oh, I learned shadow work. Now I'm, I'm, I got this. I know everything. It's, it's like, it's, it's almost like a, a gym thing. It's, it's exercise. It's, it's, a, it's a mindfulness muscle. Um, and this has become so important in our spaces when we have people that constantly, we all enter into the spaces with energy of organizing and activism, but like trauma and a lot of charge that, that feeds us to do this very wonderful work around solidarity and liberation, but at the same time can, can be really, um, can be difficult. And so how do we hold space for ourselves? And is there ways in which we can hold space for each other to be able to come into contact with those things that are difficult. Because as we come into contact with our own shame, it also becomes uh, more possible as a fractal that we can engage in and allow space for other people to name their shame and feel like they can experience their shame and still belong. So um, there is a, I think it's Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, the person that was behind the hospice movement. I. I think this is a quote attributed uh, from somebody that said like, oh, I, you know, this is a very, a very poignant quote that I hear, but I don't, I don't, I haven't been able to trace it if it's really back to Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, but it's like, I won't really fully know myself until I know that part of myself that would take um, a piece of breath out of a starving baby's mouth. And so the invitation is, is, for that courage, but also for that compassion uh, and that loving kindness to ourselves uh, and for the promise of what that magic can bring to our work. All right, thank you everybody for letting me share this today. Pass it back to you, Catherine. Thank you, Louise. I'm just so grateful to you. This was such a beautiful example of what we're hoping to offer this community. You know, these practices that allow us that are doable and 
simple and profound and meaningful um, and that allow us to show up into spaces more mindfully and more compassionately. So super grateful to you for all your sharing, your vulnerability, your clarity, and your heart. Thank you for being with us. Yeah, so I'm going to share my screen. Um, how do I do this? Can you all see that? The gift economy slide? Wonderful, thank you. Yeah, so I just wanted to let everyone know that this workshop uh, has been offered as part of the gift economy. Um, and, oh gosh, sorry. And these are the principles, the main principles of the gift economy. And I wanted to just focus a little bit on interdependence because um, I think this is one quality that we often lose connection with. Um, this understanding that we are all, we cannot thrive or live without each other. And we are sustained by people that we don't even know in ways that we will never know. And the beauty of the, the gift economy paradigm is that it takes away this idea that we need to have transaction and just recognize that in the process of giving, we are um, giving to all to ourselves in a way. Um, and the beauty of that interdependence. Um, and one of the, one of the other pieces of the gift economy is that we we focus on transparency. So this is um, information about the finances of the East Point Peace Academy, just to give you a sense of how, where we're at and what we're hoping for. Um, we've raised $910 so far for the Beloved Community Well Series, which is roughly getting close to what we're hoping for. Um, we're hoping to raise a total of $4,000 over our first cycle, which ends in late December. And this is one of my favorite quotes. And it's a piece of advice that I try to live by because it um, prevents me from getting into a place of resentment for anything that I do. And it's about really connecting with the joy of giving. And that when we give from that place of completely giving from a place of joy, it's like we are receiving at the same time. And in order to donate, uh, Sarah will put in the chat some links for you. Um, if you would like to make a donation to this program, all donations and contributions are very welcome. And we want them to come from that place of joy. Okay, and I will stop this now. And I just wanna give you a heads up about our upcoming sessions. We have uh to our next session is what we call a relational session where we come together as a community in this particular one we will be breaking into affinity groups so there'll be one group for BIPOC folks and one group for white folks to just reflect on what we've been learning reflect on where we might be stuck in our journey around integrating nonviolence into how we show up into spaces as well as what we do and two weeks from now, I will be co-facilitating a session introducing two key practices of nonviolent communication, which are empathy and self-empathy. So we hope to see you at both of those. And now to send us out, we're gonna do a chatterfall, which I just learned about recently and I just think it's so cool. Um, so yeah. Talk about the feedback forms before we we close out. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's a great. So we would love your feedback. We are really interested 
um, unlike the example that we heard, <laughs> we're actually really wanting your feedback and we really want to try to integrate as much of it as possible into how we do these sessions so that there is as much as many needs being met by these uh, sessions and as much of a co-creation as as possible. So uh, Sarah is going to put the link to the feedback form in the chat. If you could take the time right after this session, that would be awesome or come back to it at some point. It would be super supportive for us. And it's it's incredibly nourishing to hear your experiences. It keeps us keeps us going. So back to the chatterfall, where many of you might already know this, but we're just going to get you to type one word into the chat. And uh, what it, the request today is what word describes best what you are taking away from from today. So just one word and we'll let it flow. Protection, curiosity, togetherness, humility, mirror, listening, relief, gratitude. All beautiful things, learning, kindness. Sensitivity. Thank you. So I'm going to invite you to unmute yourself because we'd love to have your voice in this space as we leave. Just unmute and say goodbye, and we hopefully will see you next time. Thank, Thank you, you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Beautiful to be here. There. Thank you very, very much. Have yeah, good... thank you. Thank you. Great to see you, Nan. Good to see you too, Kevin. Thank you. So I wonder if Johanna and Johnny are still here with us or? I can go ahead and remove them. How about that? Mm, good to see you folks if you're here.